I think of a number and the number I think of if I add 3 to 8 the result is 8 so can you tell me what number I think of if you say 5 then you are correct because 3 plus 5 is 8 I can also do this by doing the opposite of addition that is 8 minus 3 equal to 5 so the number is 5 welcome to your first class on quantitative reasoning I am your director Mr. Ehige now let's look at what quantitative reasoning as a subject is it is a subject that builds your ability to reason and think and come up with solution using the hint or examples because these are the things that will help you to solve or get the solution to any given problems so now let's do a proper introduction of quantitative reasoning as a subject all right now what is quantitative reasoning all about what are the things to expect well in quantitative reasoning we are going to be making use of your basic operation symbols which are these so addition all right which is plus your subtraction that's a minus multiplication which is our times division which is divide square of numbers for example 3 square 3 square means 3 times 3 so that is 9 so 3 square is 9 then we also have square root square root is the opposite of square for example square root of 9 is square root of 3 times 3 so we pick one of it and that is 3 so the square root of 9 is 3 and finally let's look at imaginary numbers imaginary numbers are numbers that are used in the questions but are not shown all right and they are going to be between 1 and 10 except on one or two cases in this course okay now let's look at the exercises we have in this course first is exercise one although we are having three exercises now let's look at the pictures we have here we have a picture of three numbers appearing on a straight line all right and two of these pictures are there when you look at the pictures we have we have 60,300 and 200 in the first example now so if we are given 300 and 200 and we are interested in getting what is at the middle which is 60,000 so how can you make use of 200 and 300 now to the board the first thing you notice is that you have to multiply these numbers because you know 2 times 3 will definitely give you 6 so what comes to mind is to multiply the numbers but however when you look at this number it's large so we try to ignore the zeros temporarily and multiply the 2 and the 3 all right so we are going to get a 6 so the next thing is to count the number of zeros and put them on the right side of 6 there are four of them so we are going to have zero 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 that is sixty thousand sixty thousand all right when you go back you see that it is sixty thousand so when you multiply three hundred by two hundred you get sixty thousand so the same thing we do on the second example all right now let's say we are given 260,000 we are interested in getting the 300 what are we supposed to do we do the opposite of multiplication that is 60,000 
divided by 200 all right so the first thing that comes to mind because of the presence of zeros we try to reduce it as much as we can so there are two zeros under the line so we cancel out the two zeros on top the two can divide itself that is one then they divide the six two and that gives us a three so when you look at the numerator we have only th three and two zeros so that gives us three and two zeros all right three and uh, two zeros so that is 300 so that is how we got a 300 all right now in the second example that is exactly what we are going to do to also get the number on top so we make use of the number at the middle and the one at the bottom by dividing to get the number on top all right so finally if we wish to get the 200 and we are giving 60,300 we repeat the same procedure that is 60,000 divided by 300 all right so similarly we allow the two zero in the denominator to divide two of the zeros in the numerator so we have three divide three one three divide six two so we bring out the two and the two zero remaining in the numerator so we have two zero zero that is 200 so we repeat this same procedure in the second example now let's go to the next exercise which is exercise 2 it makes use of Roman numerals we have three different Roman numerals here given the V the V and the X all right we've already been taught what these symbols are if we can recall we remember that V represents 5 all right so when you look at 5 which represents V and uh, X which represents 10 something comes to mind that if you can add 5 to 5 we can get a 10 so we say V plus V is 5 plus 5 all right that gives us a 10 so we have 10 is equal to x because that is what it is in roman numera so that is how we get the number in that position so if we wish to get a number in a different position like uh, the 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 middle uh, number all right so given the x given the v at the bottom i want wish to get the uh, v at the middle so it's going to be the opposite of addition which is subtraction so x minus v will give us what 10 minus 5 all right so 10 minus 5 is also 5 so we convert this back to roman numeral and now what are we going to get we get back a v so v is the missing number in that position so the same thing we do to get the V at the bottom. All we simply do is to subtract the V from the X. Now let's look at the next example. All right. So if we wish to get the middle number, we are going to apply the same principle. All right. The principle of subtracting. All right. We know we are going to subtract. So first of all, what is XVI? x is 10 vi is 6 so that is 10 plus 6 16 all right then the next one is ix so that is 10 minus 1 10 minus 1 is 9 so we subtract 9 from 16 so what do we get our 7 so what is a 7 in roman numeral is simply 5 plus 2 that is V I I 
So this is interesting, you know. That is how you get the seven VII. Now let's look at the last exercise, which is exercise three, a triangle. Uh, you can see four numbers, seven and a four, a two and a 14. This seven and this four are connected. Why the two and 14 are connected? You know why? Because when you multiply them, you get the same number. Now let's look at this. Four times seven is 28. All right. And again, two times 14 is also 28. So you always get the same number when you multiply numbers in, in those positions. So if that is true, we wish to get the number in the four position. So what do we do? We do the opposite of multiplication. So we do multiplication first before the division. So 2 times 14, we already know that that is 28. Then this 28 that can also give that can also give us what is at the middle and the top. We divide it, and so we have 28 divided by the 7 that is given to us on top. So 28 divided by 7, if it's properly done, you get a 4. See, that is how you get the number at the middle, 4. So the same is applicable when we wish to get the 7. So you just only need to multiply and divide by 4. So now, let's say we wish to do something else. This time, we want to get a 14. The number at the 14 position. First of all, we multiply the 7 and the 4 that are connected to get our 28. Then the next step is to divide. Okay, so we have 28 divided by the 2 that is available to us on the other side. So we have 28 divided by 2. So if you do this division properly, you are going to get 1 and a 4. That is 14. Again, that is how we get the 14. Alright? So this is the same thing we do to get the 2. Now let's look at this last example. We have the 33 connected to 3, 11 to 9. So if we wish to get that 3. So we are going to therefore start with the 11 and the 9. So we say 11 times 9. What do you think we are going to get? 99, you are correct. So that is 99. 99. Again, once we are done with the multiplication, the next thing to do is division. So, so the next thing to do is to write down the 99. Then we recall that the next thing to do after writing it down is to divide. So we divide the 99 by the number given to us on the other side. And that number is 33. So when you divide 99 by 33, you get a 3. Because there are 3 33s in 99. Alright? So if we wish to get the 9, all we simply do is to multiply the 33 by 3. And what we get is 99. Alright? So once we get the 99, again, we write down the 99 first. And recall that we have to do division. Okay? But the number available to us on the other side is 11. So that means we are dividing by what? 11. So 99 divided by 11, what are we going to get? Well, if you say 9, you are very correct. Because 9 times 11 is 99. Alright, so the same way you get the 11. It's not difficult at all. And the same way you get the rest. I encourage you to do your quiz and your assignments. Okay? Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again in the next class. Bye.